Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is episode 90 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best images and I critique each shot with suggestions on how they can improve it. And today I'm pleased to critique the work of Greg Blackmore. Greg sent me in some really cool images. And this first one here, Greg did a great job of balancing the very bright parts of the image with the very dark parts of the image. And if you look over at the histogram, you could see over here to the right and to the left, we have the highlight clipping and the shadow clipping. And you could see that the histogram is more towards the middle, so we're not getting any clipping of the highlights or the shadows at all. Did a really nice job balancing the shot. And to help him do that, he has the sun, or the brightest part of the sky, behind this looks like a willow tree. So it's a really nice job. little trick a photographer could do when you're photographing a scene is you could hide the sun behind a, a tree like this and still get the fantastic colors you're going to get from the sun, but you're not going to get these uh, blown out highlights and at the other end make your uh, darks look so dark that you don't see any detail in it. So Greg did a real nice job there. The only suggestion I could make on this shot is we have this kind of dead tree kind of creeping into the frame over here. So if you could reposition yourself slightly, there's the trunk of the tree right there, a little edge, and just try to position yourself a little better to help eliminate this from the image. I think it would be a stronger image. Let's see, next one there. This is a beautiful shot, um, very nicely done. Uh, nice reflection in the water. This is 1 200th of a second f of 10 ISO 200, 10 millimeters. Um, very well done. We have this kind of natural framing of this tree coming in over here and the bushes go down and then back up a little bit. So we have it nicely framed. It's a really nice shot. I like the processing. It's not overdone. Uh, very nice colors. The sky is fantastic. Uh, really nice job. I'm not sure if that is the original sky or added. Um, either way, it's it's a really, really nice shot. Um, you know, fantastic job. This shot, you know, it's, it, it's begging for a foreground element because there's really not a lot. We have this kind of mist and we have the lens flare that kind of add a little bit uh, artistically to the shot. But overall, there's not a super compelling thing that's interesting right here. If there was like a tractor or a payloader or some type of farm equipment in the foreground or a person in the foreground, I think it would be a lot uh, stronger, more compelling image. This shot very nice. Uh, again, kind of a farm shot and we have the um, kind of the mist, in, morning mist in the, in the background there. Uh, this is a shot too, if you could revisit this scene when the sky is more interesting. Right now we just have this expansive light blue sky. So if you could come back at a different time when you have uh, some clouds, some cloud cover. And um, always before you, you know, print an image or send an image out on the internet or anything, make sure you get rid of dust spots. Uh, dust spots, you know, sensor spots, they're just, very, you know, distracting. There's a big, big one right there. And uh, so make sure you, you know, clone those out. It's a really cool shot. I like this uh, tone mapped image and what's different about it is it's pretty much in black and white but we have splashes of color here and a little down in here so it's kind of cool in that regard how um, kind of a neat selective use of color where there isn't just one object that's color and everything else is black and white. We have kind of subdued colors everywhere and then some more vibrant colors in selective spots. So it's um, very well done. A uh, couple things, we're really close to the edge right here and right here. So if you could just get a little more space that would help here. But we do have this creeping into the shot which I wish was eliminated. So if you backed up, you'd get more of this in the shot too. So maybe you could uh, just back up a little and just get like another 6 inches to 12 inches um, in the scene on the top and bottom and it would probably equate to, you know, a few millimeters on the frame of looking at it on my, on my uh, Lightroom here. So just a few more millimeters up there, a few more millimeters down here and maybe have an assistant try to hold this branch back or something so that wasn't in the shot. And then it, then it would be pretty much a perfect shot. So it's really, really nicely done. This is a really cool shot of the guitar. Um, we have the pedals back here, so we kind of adds, you know, we, to the environment of a musician. 
Uh, it's a, kind of a Les Paul shape. I'm not sure if this is a Les Paul, but it's a really neat, neat shot. I uh, like the detail. It was 1 30th of a second f at 3.8, ISO 1100, so it's natural light. Had to really boost up the um, ISO to get the exposure, you know, something that was probably handheld. Um, you know, it's uh, funny. Uh, I play guitar, and two of my sons play guitar. I probably, I'm not exaggerating, I probably have 25 guitars in this house, and I've never taken a picture of a guitar. So, um, someday I might. And this is a really nice composition. I might do something like this. This is a really nice uh, job, Greg. I wonder if you're um, r related to Richie Blackmore. Uh, let me know if you are. I'd like to get an autograph from Richie. But anyway, thank you uh, for this shot. This is a really nice shot. It's another selective color shot, and again, it's kind of done differently, and I like it in that we have a large area of, of color. We have the track, and we have the yellow goalposts, and some of the markings on the field, and everything else, the color is sifted right out. So it's a pretty cool shot, um, very kind of a cold, frigid shot. Again, we have some um, sensor noise. Um, we got to get rid of this sensor dust, so clone those out. Also, some of these might be birds way off in the distance flying. Uh, you know, to the casual viewer, it, you know, it just looks like sensor dust. So make sure you even clone out any birds way off in the distance um, just to make it uh, a stronger shot overall. The um, skies, you know, overcast, it adds to the dismal feeling with the splash of color kind of contrasting that. And I always talk about um, try to photograph uh, contrasts. It could be a lot of different contrasts. You could have textures. You could have something that's very hard and something very soft together in, you know, the same picture. Or imagine like a, a, a cannonball sitting on a, a, a thing of feathers or something like that. So, so you look for these things in your environment that you're shooting. Something very hard, something very soft, something very colorful and vibrant, something very stark and cold. And that's what um, Greg did here and it's a really nice exercise to do and it's a really nice shot. It's another uh, tone mapped into image and this is a pretty cool shot and I mentioned in the I think it was in the previous critique photos of bicycles sell. If you're selling prints, you know art prints, for some reason bicycles seem to sell and the tone mapped ones will sell very well so if uh, you're ever interested in selling this shot you'd probably have a market for it. I'm not saying you're gonna sell a thousand of them and quit your day job but, you know, you'd sell a print or two, I bet, if you had it up somewhere for sale. And it's a very nice shot. You know, I like the way it's tone mapped, um, very well done. Um, you know, the colors are very striking and stand out. Typically, you do want to try to get the entire bike in the frame, if at all possible. Because this, though, is tone mapped and it's really considered more of an art shot, uh, um, it's very nicely done. We have the um, bike going at a diagonal in the frame which adds to the composition so remember that you don't want to shoot it flat on it's, it wouldn't be as strong as a, of an image but having it going diagonal through the frame uh, helps the viewer view the picture and it's very well done. This is a neat shot too um, you know the skyline again it's very dismal very overcast we do have this expansive sky that's a real light gray two things. If you could ever revisit this area, not sure where this is. Um, it reminds me of Pittsburgh though, but I'm, I don't think it is. But wherever this is, if you could ever revisit this area and um, shoot it when the sky is, is a little more interesting, that's, you know, that would be optimal. In this shot here though, you do have a sensor spot here and you have these uh, spots. I don't know if they're sensor spots, dust spots on your lens, or birds way off in the distance. Again, you got to clone those out. Um, the only other thing I could suggest is uh, get a graduated filter, turn the exposure down so it's not as bright. It's just the, just a little too bright and distracting and just um, pull a graduated filter down over the sky and when you do that it, it helps balance the shot more so we're not ha being overwhelmed by the bright sky. Of course in doing that I enhance the sensor spots even more so you really uh, emphasize on getting rid of those. And even here where there's like a wispy cloud that is it a cloud or is that a dot? You know, clone it out. If it if you're not 100% sure someone looking at that's going to know that's a cloud, then just clone it out. And um, I think that would enhance this shot a lot. This is a neat shot too. Uh, typically too, when you take a picture of an animal or a person for that matter, uh, usually you don't want to cut off 
like in this case the horse's ears and the horse's snout you want to get the whole thing or you want to get in super tight so a feature of the horse is, is dominating like uh, there's common shots I have one where you get kind of half of the horse's head and you have the eye dominate the shot so in that case you're cutting off most of the horse but there's a feature of the horse that you're um, having dominate in this case though um, I like it it's we have very very colorful horses and subdued color in the background so it's a really nice effect again it's cold uh, kind of a stark day we have wisps of uh, snowflakes you know coming down so that's really kind of cool the only other uh, thing though I could suggest directly for this portrait of these horses is the eyes um, the viewer always wants to look at the eyes and see the eyes as something it makes it look vibrant and alive so in the raw file this would be a lot more effective is if you just brighten the eyes up and um, in this case it's going to look kind of ridiculous but what you would do is you just brighten up the eyes enough where we could see the pupil and um, it would make the horse look that much more alive so there's the before and there's the after now I just did that it took me two seconds of course you, you zoom in and do a really good job on the raw file and, and the raw file is going to have a lot more data than a JPEG so it's going to have all you know the range of you know uh, of um, luminance in there so you'll be able to make these eyes um, a lot brighter and portray the structure that is involved in the eye of the horse and it would be a lot stronger image as you could see I think it is at least if you look now and look there so uh, consider doing that on your raw image uh, bring out the eyes a little more I think that's it for Greg. Yeah, that's it for Greg Blackmore. Thank you very much uh, for sending us your images. I really enjoyed critiquing them. And remember, if you're related to Richie Blackmore, try to get me an autograph. I'd really appreciate that. And, um, you know, really uh, nice stuff. And thank you, uh, Greg, for your patience. My critiques are running well over a month, and Greg waited very patiently, and I really do appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who watches all my videos. I really do appreciate that. If you have time, go over to my website anthonymorganti.com and look at all the photography stuff I have over there and if you haven't already uh, go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel I really do appreciate it thanks